majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise, majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne. anthem raise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Did you all hear that okay? Amen. Okay. Gio is just, he's a dear. And so you'll, you'll be seeing him. He's actually minister of music of the First United Methodist Church in uh, Miami. So as well. So I appreciate him helping me with this. So let's go and join in our uh, wonderful call to worship. And if you'll just bear with me a second, I'll get the script up so we can follow. All right. Ready? From the mustard seed, a great and mighty shrub emerges. Good things can come from something that seems so insignificant. The spore of the yeast can leaven the whole loaf of bread. We can be those people who bring hope and peace to God's world. Come, let us praise the God of great and mighty wonders. Let our spirits soar in gratitude for the opportunities God gives us to serve. Amen. All right. Now, this one, you're just going to have to bear with me because um, there we go. Uh, more than silver. So let me get this one started. This one is me. Sorry. <laughs> in the prayer of confession with Mike. Lord, we like big things. We have focused on big cars, big houses, big bank accounts, big, big, 
big. And you must be disappointed in us when we forget that from even the smallest thing, something mighty can happen. Today, the scriptures remind us of the smallest of the mustard seed and the tiny grain of yeast. Each of these things grew into something that offered shelter, peace, and hope, which became the treasures of compassion. Take away our need for the big possessions. Open our hearts to receive your word of love and healing, and let our spirits be ready to grow for you. Forgive our stubborn resistance to your faithful presence. For all things will work for the good for those who love God and are called, are called according to God's purpose. Amen. Listen to these words of assurance. Don't be frantic. God is working mighty things in your life. You have given the spirit of hope and courage. God is with you. Place your trust in God's absolute care. Amen. This morning, uh, we come to God in prayer. And we have many that we uh, want to keep in mind. We thank God for Mike and Jeannie's uh, good trip and return. And they'll be turning around to leave again. So hopefully, that will help them uh, get a little rest before they hit the road again. Also, it's their anniversary coming up, so we want to wish them a happy anniversary. And Mike and Jeannie, you want to tell us how many years? The big 5 -0. <laughs> So do you have any words of wisdom? I dare not go there. <laughs> <laughs> never, let, never let the sun go down on your anger, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good. All right. And so uh, we also want to remember um, Clutter, who's suffering from uh, severe back pain. Um, we want to remember Linda Wilson, who's not feeling very well. We want to rejoice in Charlene's, it looks like, good recovery from her tooth and her uh, eye um, surgeries. Um, and she seems to be doing well, and we're, we're glad about that. And then, as I mentioned before, Tom Sanderson um, is recovering from uh, an encounter with a mule. <laughs> his mule so keep him in your prayers are there other requests prayer requests all righty let us go to god in prayer god of amazing surprises how easy it is for us to focus on the big picture and forget the change that comes in the smallest of ways. In our hearts, in our spirits, and then in our actions. We have gathered here this day, this time of virtual worship with different experiences to hear your word of healing and of love. We offer our prayers for our family and friends who are in need of your forgiveness. Yet we withhold ourselves from you. We have a hard time imagining that you would find much real worth in each of us. We think of ourselves as insignificant in your kingdom. You have poured your love on us. You have given us the seeds of hope and compassion you have called us the treasure that is meant to enrich the world. How us be those people who are so confident in your presence that we dare to step out in faith, to work for you in places of need and strife, to witness your love in all that we do, proclaiming your presence with our mouths and our actions. Give us your guidance and forgiveness and courage to be at work in your kingdom and Lord, this morning we come to you and we lift up all those that are facing surgery or have health concerns. We ask that you would be with our local community 
And what a wonderful time yesterday, Lord, to meet with the chief, to meet our new canine dog. And there were 18 people there the, yesterday morning, Lord. Thank you for that. And thank you for that concern. And thank you for allowing us to be part of this wonderful endeavor. Be with those officers. And especially, Lord, be with this new canine dog as he seeks to help to make our area and the area in San Luis Valley safer. I ask that you would be with our first responders, our police, our military, those that are firefighters, those that are working in hospitals, those that are stepping up to be the first responders and essential workers during this time. That you would protect them and that you would give them wisdom as to how they should move and work and pray for those that are suffering under this virus we ask that you would help speed the recoveries of most of the people lord and those that are struggling lord we ask that you would help the new drugs that they're using to keep them alive lord so that they would not succumb to death right now as many churches in the area and many many religious people are doing we just claim protection and no more lives will be lost Lord that we greet every single one no matter who they are people would have wisdom and kindness and compassion and that they would see the need to even though they don't like necessarily the rules or restrictions to abide by them for the safety of everyone. Lord, we ask that you would be with our leaders, our local leaders, as well as our state and national and global leaders. This Lord is probably more than anyone expected to do during their term. Lord, we ask that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them guidance and peace and help them make wise decisions. Lord, we ask for the welfare of the world that you would be with all the countries as we seek to end social justice, injustice, and that we seek just social justice for the oppressed and also as we fight health needs throughout the world. Lord, we know that Texas and Hawaii have just of destructive winds and rains and there have been issues around here as well and we just lift up those that are are struggling with disasters and the cleanup of after disasters give protection Lord and help them in this endeavor give them strength Lord, we ask that you would be with pastors and religious leaders all over the world this morning, Roy is preaching at the Pioneer Church, and we just ask that you would be with him and give him your words, Lord. Fill him with the Holy Spirit. And thank you for raising up leaders who are willing to speak forth your message. Lord, we come to this time of asking prayer for Bobby Abbott. She will face this week for the severe pain she is suffering and we just ask that you would be with her and Ray that Jackson Collier Dora May Crawford Davis Marilyn and Dick Eagles Ron and Gloria Fortin Wayne Garcia Isabel Geibel Margaret Gillian Tracy Gunther Debbie Hall and her family, Sue Jenkins, Eva McLean, Dakota Miller, the Miller family in Iowa as they seek to be safe, Cheryl and Linda Mix, Vicki and Gerald Myers, Shirley Myers, Wayne and Alice Phillips, Vicki Ratzleff, Sherry Robbins, Marilyn Roberta, Joe Roker, Tom Sanderson, Charlene Schaefer, the Ziggler family who, as Luke fights brain cancer, Cloetta Spearman, Matthew Stanley, Byron and Amy Ulrich. And Lord, we 
especially lift up those that have lost loved ones during these past few months. Ray Abbott and him death of his brother, Alice Warlow and the loss of her sister, Linda Wilson and the loss of her brother, Betty Combs and the loss of Bob, Ron Cooper and the loss of his dad, Ernest, the family of Peggy Duran, Betty Emily and the loss of Bob, the family of Jim Ford, Regina Hickman and family and the loss of her son, Anthony Lobato and family, the family of Linda Damaris, Linda Mix and family, the family of Bob Myers, Shirley Myers and family, Richard Karen and family, Claudia and Jolene Robinson and family, and Lord, for this young man whose life was cut short for this through this accident um, that was announced this morning be with that family as they grieve as well. Lord, we ask all of this in your precious name as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Psalms 139, verses 1 through 12 and 23 through 24. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You searched out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. <clears throat> Our epistle reading is Romans 8, verses 26 through 39. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit speak, thinks, because he pleads for the saints, consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. We know this because God knew them in advance, and he decided in advance that they would be conformed to the image of his son. That way his son would be the first of many brothers and sisters. Those who God decided in advance would be conformed to his son he also called those <clears throat> whom he called he also made righteous those whom he made righteous he also glorified so what are we going to say about these things if god is for us who is against us he didn't spare his own son but gave him up for us all won't he always freely give us all things with him.
Who will bring a charge against God's elect people? It is God who acquits them. Who is going to convict them? It is Jesus Christ who died, even more who was raised, and who also is at the right hand side of God. It is Christ Jesus who also pleads our case for us. Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, we are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for slaughter. But in all things, we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Nor death or life, nor angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth, or any other thing that is created. Amen. And our gospel this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapters 13, 31 through 33, and 44 through 52. The parable of the mustard seed. He told another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds. But when it grows, it's the largest of all vegetable plants. It becomes a tree so that the birds in the sky come and nest in the branches. And the parable of the yeast. He told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. And the parable of the treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that somebody hid in a field, which someone else found and covered up. Full of joy, the finder sold everything and bought that field. And the parable of the merchant. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found one very precious pool, pearl, he went and sold all that he owned and bought it the parable of the net. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that people threw into a lake and gathered all kinds of fish. When it was full, they pulled it to the shore where they sat down and put the good fish together into containers. But the bad fish they threw away. That's the way it will be at the end of the present age. The angels will go out and separate the evil people from the righteous people and will throw the evil ones into a burning furnace. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Treasures new and old. Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked? They said to him, yes. Then he said to them, therefore every legal expert who has been trained as a disciple for the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings old and new things out of the treasure chests. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Yep. So our sermon title today is the warning for our time from Jesus. And there are several stories that you just heard, parables, and we're going to look at them today to see what Jesus is trying to tell us. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, you place before us the images of the small, tiny mustard seed, the grain of yeast, the small treasure, and remind us that we, though we think ourselves small, are not insignificant in your kingdom. Open our hearts and our spirits to you in thankful remembrance of the ways in which we can serve you throughout our lives. Open our ears that we may hear the word that you share this morning. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would give me the words that you would be to share. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Jesus had a lot to say about the kingdom of heaven. 
In fact, about everything that Jesus did during his ministry was about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' first words were, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Start with the parable of the mustard seed and yeast. They contrast small beginnings with their great effects, emphasizing the power of God's actions. It grows into a grows from a tiny seed is great by comparison to its beginnings. The surely has his tongue planted firmly in his cheek to call it a tree. The mustard shrub in his native land typically tops about eight or ten, maybe twelve feet. Only not a tall redwood that we are familiar with. The mustard shrub must have meant something strongly to Jesus. He wouldn't have compared the kingdom of heaven to this great uh, tree instead of a shrub. Even the cedars of Lebanon and even our great redwood trees have a larger beginning. The mustard seed has just a tiny speck. And so that is what Jesus is trying to focus on. Our best clue comes from the church that's developed over the centuries. The church is indeed by far, beginnings is more than the, the 12 disciples. If we look around the globe, I don't know that the disciples saw how large the church would be. We have grand cathedrals and account, occasionally we have small churches and it's very much like that tiny mustard seed that began with Jesus. From. Perhaps it's the lesson of the mustard seed that Christians should live expectantly knowing that God brings great things of our small beginnings. That we should not expect the kingdom to be great as the world expects greatness. The parable of the mustard seed and the leavened bread encourage Christians to exercise faith and patience. God is less likely to sweep through the world like a conquering hero steed, he is more likely to be found in a still, small voice. In most cases, Christians will see only the small evidence of progress when they see a couple married in the church altar, or a baby baptized, or even a youth group engaged in some activities that look more like entertainment than really disciple activities but you see their love for each other and God grow. In the hands of God, these small beginnings have a potential to grow so large as to shift the world on its axis. When Mike and Jeannie got married, they had hoped to have a 50th anniversary. They didn't know what the years would entail for them to get here. They probably wanted to have a big celebration with everyone, but unfortunately, that's not possible. They have to decide that they're going to celebrate with their family. We don't see our small, insignificant, what we think are insignificant lives mattering, but they do. Like the, like the mustard seed and the leaven, the small all becomes big. It holds so much potential. In the story about the yeast, the translation used for the word yeast, the people of the time were seldom privileged to even have yeast. That was something they didn't really know about. Charlene and I have been talking about um, the virtual Bible school we're going to have. And one of the things has to do with, with yeast. And the whole idea was taking this, this, this dough 
and this small little piece of yeast and began to grow, you cut it in half and you keep growing and it keeps growing and it keeps growing. This is very different than our go to the store, buy a loaf of bread or buy a box and just make it or put it in a machine and let the machine do it. So they understood three measures of flour are enough bread to feed 100 to 150 people. Small quantity to feed so many. We who live under Christ's rule seem unimportant, but with God's power, we can make a huge difference. Parable encourages us not to seclusion, but to the involvement in the world. It can only do its work when it's mixed into a large quantity of raw dough. As long as you keep your yeast in the jar or in the packet, nothing's going to grow. But if you're willing to take and mix it into raw dough, possibilities are endless. The parable of the yeast, Jesus speaking both about the Jewish ways as, well as new ways. He's not claiming one is bad and therefore it has to be right or wrong. He's talking about taking it and making it better, making it increase. The parable of the hidden treasure and the parable of the pearl are two parables of discovery and joy and action. You know, you talk to most people and those parables, those two parables are usually overlooked. But we all know that there are times when we find treasures hidden the merchant is actively looking for pearls while another man stumbles onto the treasure. Both, however, recognize the overwhelming value of their discovery and sell everything they have so that they can buy it. In either case, there's not a hint of sacrifice or giving up something precious or a difficult decision. Neither is bad to sell everything because they are overwhelmed with joy of discovery and prospect of possessing such a huge, great pleasure, treasure. They are like the disciples who are left, have left everything and their families to follow Jesus. And Paul, who regarded everything as loss except the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, his Lord. They are unlike the rich young ruler who went away grieving because he couldn't bear to part from his possessions. So there are two lessons to be learned here. One is that the demand of the gospel places on us is not free. It requires a response. We can't vacillate and try to serve two masters. Neither man would have gained the treasure if they had refused to pay the price. Indeed, the chapter starts with the parable of the soils in which the seed finds no lasting root of the three to four soils, which we covered a couple of weeks ago. But it's the good news that makes it desirable nation convinces few people to listen. We're full of judgment and condemnation and your life is wrong and you need to live it this way. People aren't going to listen. They don't want that. And it's not because it's uncomfortable, because it is uncomfortable, but it's God. It's the Holy Spirit that causes lives to change and transform be there to walk alongside, not to shake our fingers. It calls for joy and it calls for a response. We can't sit idly by. The parable of the net is also like the parable of the weeds. <laughs> it's 
He talks about the present openness of the kingdom to all who would enter and the great judgment in which the bad will be separated from the good. This parable of the dragnet, as it's called, the, the net, makes it essential points about judgment. Judgment belongs not to us or to the disciples. It belongs to God judgment that will come. In the parable, the dragnet scoops up sorts, uh, all sorts of fish, good and bad. And I don't know about Mike Spearman, but I know Mike Norris is a fisherman. And so he likes to fly fish. <laughs> but even with fly fishing, there may be fish that he catches that he doesn't really want. So he will throw it back. And so we are looking at the different types of creatures that are like different types of people. The verse that says, when it was filled, they threw up, uh, they threw up on the beach. They sat down, gathered it with good containers to put the bad they threw away. When it was filled, talks about the end of the world. Separating the good from the bad. Now, we like to be sorters. We as Christians find it easy to say, well, this fruit is good and this one is bad. But remember, that's not our job. <laughs> that's God's job. The parable encourages the disciples to take an open approach to evangelism. Not like a uh, submarine seeking out to send a missile to a particular area. We're supposed to share God's word with everyone we meet. And yes, some of times it will fall on deaf ears and sometimes it will be received, but that is not our choice. The Pharisees often took uh, the approach of being gatekeepers. Okay, come to our church, but wait a minute. No, you, you can't come in flip-flops and short shorts. Or you, can't, you, you must not love God. You, you're, you're, you didn't come well prepared to be here. Um, that's not what God is asking us to do. The word is to be like the farmer who freely throws the seed everywhere. And let God separate the good from the bad. The last one talks about treasures new and old. Understanding is important to this gospel to understand the essential quality of being an authentic disciple. Jesus compares his disciples to scribes, those who qualify to teach and meet the meaning of the scripture. Matthew may be thinking of Jesus' disciples that they're endowed with wisdom and authority and right understanding of the law, perhaps some measure of prophetic inspiration. Scribes trained for years and years about the kingdom of heaven by studying scripture. The image is a relevant and a disciplined person, carefully attending to the word of God, this is what Matthew expects of disciples. Old things come from Jew Jewish heritage. New things will be explained later. Jesus, again, is not trying to make one way bad and another way good. He's both as treasures. Understanding is a treasure. The kingdom of heaven, according to Jesus, was more than just a peaceable kingdom in the future. It's not going to happen by and by, like we say, like to sing in that song. It's present and real and revolutionary and many times upsetting. It can mock you, it can shock you, it can upset you, it can crucify you, it can confuse you and call you to do things you didn't think you could do. The kingdom of heaven is like a weed 
a mustard seed that takes over a cultivated field. Don't want the mustard seed in your garden. Birds may like, like it, but farmers don't. Then why would God be sowing a weed? The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, a tiny powerful change agent that when mixed with dough and a little water and heat swells the loaf. A little tiny thing causing a chemical havoc. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. You give up everything in order to buy the field in which you have hidden it. The kingdom of heaven is like the pearl that you have to have. Nothing else will do or so you could consider it absolutely foolish and sell everything in order to buy that one little pearl. What are you going to do with it? Is anything worth that much? Is it worth that much to you? What is the most important thing to you? Really? The kingdom of heaven is like that amazing catch of fish, which when it's shaken down and separated, the bad thrown away, the good taken in the end of the age when the angels come. Looking at the words are important. For the Greek word for becoming new has two different meanings. Just like remodeling a house or a room, you claim to have a new house or room. However, the original part is still there. You have just transformed it. And so it is with the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. We are in the process of being transformed or remodeled parables or warnings to the church to make a choice to be helpers for our master carpenter or to simply be an observer whose house falls in disrepair and falls down and leads to destruction. Our Bible study on Wednesday nights are studying what God wants us to know and learn from the writings of John, Revelation, and the writings called Under the Tree of Life. I invite you to join us on this journey. We'd like to imagine these parables are told by a meek and gentle Jesus. However, history and scripture tells us that Jesus was a Palestinian revolutionary and the liberator. He was prepared to live and die to see a new transformed war, a world come into being. So my friends, the choice is you, for you. Will you heed what Jesus is calling us to be and to do? Or will you simply listen and go on the way you are doing today? Remember, a little bit of yeast can help us develop our spiritual life to the fullest and transform into the new creature that is talked about in the scriptures. Amen. This morning, I again, uh, thank you for the, uh, your, your willingness to help and send your contributions. Um, we are still taking the contributions for Swatch um, the bank up there is still closed, so you can mail them to the church to po Post Office Box 626. Even the bank is closed in Sawatch. Yes. Yeah. The bank is closed in Sawatch. Yes, it is. And, or you can give online at Center or text the donation to 719-628-1830. Again, thank you for all of your help. Thank you for being uh, uh, givers, and thank you so much for all that you are doing there during this difficult time. All right, so let me share this again. And let's see if we can go to the next. So Sorry.
as the deep and swore the water so my soul longs after you you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you you alone are my strength and my shield to you my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. As the deer pants for the water so my soul longs after you. Go into the world to be those who are patient and willing to work with the wheat as well as with the weeds. Bring the good news of, the, of God's love wherever you go. May God's people and love go with you always. Amen. And this next student who is sharing is Richard Smith. Um, he is another one of my students. And let me see if I can get this to go. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. God be blessed. So I hope you enjoyed that this morning. Um, they are some awesome kids. <laughs> and I thank them for sharing their God-given talents with us this morning. Um, and I thank you for joining us. I'm going to actually stop the recording.